our negotiation class. And today we're going to be looking at part six or unit six, whatever you want to call it. But the main point today is we're going to be looking at integrative negotiation. Integrative negotiation. So last time we looked at distributive negotiation. That was win-lose. Today we're going to look at integrative negotiation and that's what we often call win-win. So distributive win-lose, integrative win-win. I just want to emphasize before we begin that it's easy for us to go to class, it's easy for us to read a book, it's easy for us to think win-win is always the best situation. And as we'll learn today, yes, win-win is great if we can do it, but the key point is both sides of the negotiation need to share that goal of win-win. If they don't share that goal of win-win, then it's going to be very difficult to obtain a win-win solution or outcome because one side may be thinking win-win, but the other side is thinking win-lose. So in order to have an integrative strategy, we really need to have both sides adopt that. If you have one side trying to have integrative and another side doing distributive, but of course they don't say it openly, or they may say that they're trying to win-win, but actually they're trying to use a distributive approach, then the side that's trying to use win-win integrative would be at a huge disadvantage. And where does that disadvantage come from? Why is it such a disadvantage? This ties into what we've been talking about over the last few parts of this uh, book, which is you need to keep your secret secret. That's really a key point. Remember, I'm always telling you, keep your secrets secret. Keep your secret information secret. What is some of your secret information, such as your target prices, right? The limit prices, the, the prices that you will not go over or under, depending if you're buyer or seller. So that negotiation range, remember, that's determined by what's the limit, what's the very highest and lowest prices that are acceptable for the buyer and seller, if we're talking about price. It doesn't have to be price, of course. Price is just an easy one to talk about. So you need to keep that information secret. Otherwise, if you let it out, the other side could tell you not their true secret information, and then you try to obtain, for example, a price, and you have no idea if their target price is really their target price. So today what we're going to look at is integrative, and it's a big difference, a big change from what we've been talking about so far, which is my emphasis on this distributive, my emphasis on win-lose, my emphasis on keeping your secrets very secret. Okay, so let's begin looking at this uh, integrative and see how it functions. So we'll do a little introduction. Negotiations always begin with a difference between the two sides. In fact, we began this class by saying, in order to have a negotiation, you must have two sides that have something in common, they want something in common, and they have to have something different. If the things they want in common are in common and there's nothing different, then they're already in agreement. There's not a problem. However, if they have something that's not in common, they want totally different things, then again, there's absolutely nothing to negotiate about because there's nothing in common. So we begin by saying, hey, remember that? You need to have something different. You need to have something the same. Whatever that difference is, in a distributive bargaining situation, the negotiator is not concerned with understanding the other side or relating any secret information. They want to keep their secret secret, and they really don't want to understand what the other side is talking about or what the other side needs. What they're concerned more about are those two questions. Remember those two questions we asked. What is the importance of getting a deal now? What is the importance of this deal? And what is the importance of the relationship in the future? Remember, and from there we derive our strategy, right? Well, in a distributive situation, we just want to get the maximum outcome. 
and those strategies will help us get the maximum outcome. However, in the integrative, we're going to be a little bit different. In the integrative situation, what we have is anything gained from one side to another side is the distributive, but in integrative, let me get my video working here, I'm a little bit rusty today. We're going to talk about the pie. Now, in the distributive, we talked about the pizza. So I'm going to stick with the food metaphors. So I don't mix metaphors. So remember we talked about the pizza and there was only one piece of pizza and it wasn't enough. And so whoever got something, the other person lost something. Well, today we're going to talk about the pie. Now, in negotiation, we often talk about the pie because the pie is a lot like the pizza, right? If you cut a piece of pie and you give it to me, that means that's one less piece for you, doesn't it? But what can we do to change this situation? What can we do to make it different? Well, in integrative, we use the phrase called expanding the pie. Integrative bargaining takes a very different approach than what we talked about before. It assumes that the differences can be understood between the two parties and that they can overcome those differences with both sides getting what they want and no side losing what they want. Now that's a very interesting point, right? Let me emphasize that again. When we talk about the pie, uh, it's similar to the pizza. So let's forget about the pizza for now. Let's just stick on the pie, right? The idea is a pie, 360 degrees, the amount of the pie, the volume of the pie is, fi is fixed. We usually think, so if you get a piece of pie, I get one piece less. If you get all the pie, I get none of the pie. If I get all the pie, you get none of the pie. So it would seem that that's a very distributive situation. But today, in this part, what we're gonna focus on is how do we do something called expand the pie? Because if we can expand the pie, that is change the situation so that the pie doesn't seem so fixed, or actually change the pie, like get two pies maybe, then maybe you can get what you want and I can get what I want and that's what we're talking about when we talk about integrative motivation compared to distri uh, integrative bargaining compared to distributive bargaining. Integrative bargaining is often called win-win compo as compared to win-lose, which of course is the distributive situation. So if there's two words I need you to remember, because we're going to use them all the time, that is distributive and integrative. Distributive, win-lose. Integrative, win-win. Okay, let's begin with an introduction to this idea of integrative. The differences between the two sides of the negotiation are minimized and an emphasis is placed on what the two sides have in common. So this is the very beginning. We're gonna think in this approach of integrative bargaining. How can we minimize the differences between the two groups or more groups? Well, how can we minimize those differences? How do we get to a win-win? You get to a win-win by having both sides understanding both sides needs. So, in this situation, it's kind of 180 degrees from what we've been talking about in distributive. In this case, in integrative, it's key that we need to understand what the other side wants, understand what the other side needs. Now, in distributive, we really don't try to understand that. What we try to do is we try to guess their secret information. We try to give them false information. We try to mislead them. So if I'm the seller, I tell you that my costs are much higher than my costs actually are. I tell you things like, I can't make money at that price, I'm going to lose money when actually I may make money. So it's a lot about um, deception. Although I don't like to use the word deception because what it really is saying is maximizing your situation so that you can get more out of the deal than you would otherwise because everything you get uh, you get at the cost of the other side. Everything you lose is at the benefit of the other side. In this case, integrative, we're trying to say, hey, wait a minute. If I can understand you and you can understand me, is it possible we can create a solution, an answer, 
that will give us a conclusion where I get what I want and you get what you want. And that's what we're talking about today. By understanding what the other side actually needs, the negotiation can move away from an emphasis on single issues like price, which are distributive and cause one side to lose and one side to gain. Now, it's a little bit hard to understand this way. Just hold on, take a minute. We're going to give some good examples that I think make it much easier to understand. Integra integrative bargaining is not about compromise. This is something people often get confused about. Remember, compromise is something like, well, why don't I give up half and you give up half? So if, if you want the price of 100 and I want the price of 200, let's make the price 150. That's compromise. The problem with compromise is if we compromise, I give up half, you give up half, then it's possible that both sides now get not what they want and they don't lose everything but they don't gain everything and it ends up they just don't get what they wanted at all so both sides end up not getting what they wanted that may be better than no deal at all yes that's true so compromise may get you at least a deal if the deal is important but does it maximize does it really get get you what you want remember maximizing in a distributive situation means getting as much as you can uh, making the other side lose so you can gain more. In the integrative, is it compromise? You just get half and they get half? No, it's not. What we're trying to do in integrative is create a situation where both sides get what they want. That is a little bit different and a little bit hard to wrap your head around sometimes. Integrative solutions find a solution that gives both sides what they want, not just part of what they want. To do this, new solutions must be found through cooperation, openness, and honesty, opposite of the distributive bargaining situation where we want to stay closed, not be honest, not let our secrets out, and we want to in fact use uh, tactics that fool the other side to misunderstand what our actual targets are or what our limits are. Let me begin with an example here, I think, to make it easy to understand. Remember, previously we had uh, the pizza example. Uh, now we were talking about the pie. Now let's go with a hot dog. I'm going to stick with the food metaphor here for a while because I like it. So let's go look at a little dialogue here. Jane says, a hot dog is not quite what I had in mind for lunch. So they're looking at lunch and Jane's saying, hot dog's not what I want. Fred says, we could, see, we could consider going to a restaurant down the block. Okay, so we have a lunch situation. They want to get some food. Fred says, let's have a hot dog. And Jane says, I don't know. I don't think I want a hot dog. Fred says, okay, you don't want a hot dog? Let's go to the restaurant. Jane says, nope, we can't go to the restaurant because I only brought $5. So they left their money at home. So you leave your money at home, you're not gonna be able to go to the restaurant. Guess he didn't bring his credit card. Fred says, well then, unless you have a better option, I think we have no choice. Okay, so here we have the classic situation again. We can have a negotiation, why? Because we have two groups or two people in this case. They have something similar, they have something different. What is similar? They both wanna eat lunch. Uh, what is different? One is saying, let's buy a hot dog. Another one is saying, you know, I don't like that. So now we come into the situation of, well, they both have something in common. They both have something different. Jane says, I really don't want to eat a hot dog. So this is her key point she's coming up with. She's developing her goal package, and it doesn't include a hot dog. And Fred is saying, I didn't know you hate hot dogs so much. So now they're trying to understand what's the situation. So... Fred begins by saying, I didn't know this about you. I didn't know. So what he's actually saying is, can you explain this to me? What's the, what, what's the situation? What is it you're thinking of? Now, this is quite different than what we've looked at before in our dialogues. Previously, what we've looked at is, I just tell you what I want. 
and you tell me what you want. And then I give you my next offer, you give me your counter offer. And we keep laying out our positions and we may change them a little bit. In this case, what we're actually doing is Fred is coming out and saying, look, uh, why is this hot dog thing so important to you? What's the deal with hot dogs? And Jane explains, I don't hate hot dogs, but I'm on a diet and I can't eat too much bread. Ah, okay. So now what we've done is Jane has explained why she's against the hot dog. So her goal package is no hot dog, but she does want to eat. And Fred's saying, well, explain. And so she explains, well, it's not that I'm against hot dogs, it's that I'm on a diet. The diet, in my diet, I can't eat too much bread every day. So this is over my limit. So in this way, we begin to explain why you have this goal, why you have this target. Fred says, we have to compromise anyway. Since we only have enough money for one hot dog, hot dog costs $5, we will have to cut it in half. So you only get half of the bread. So Fred is saying, hey, don't worry. You're on a diet. You're not, you're not supposed to eat so much bread. You're not allowed to eat so much bread. Don't worry. You'll get half the bread because we're going to cut the hot dog in half. That sounds like a good idea, right? And Jane says, yeah, I guess that is better. So we're improving but I'm not supposed to eat any bread today. So now we're beginning to understand Jane's situation a little bit more. By explaining what her situation is, Fred can understand the case, uh, what she needs in her package. Fred says, maybe we can find a mutually satisfactory answer. So now we begin with the orientation. I'm beginning to understand what you're thinking. So can we come up with an idea. Can we come up with a solution that makes you happy and makes me happy? So this from the very beginning, this is the goal. This is key to an integrative uh, negotiation approach. From the very beginning, I want to give you what you want. I want you to get what you want. I want you to give me what I want. I want us all to be happy in other words. Did I say that right? Does that make sense? Jane says, you mean a way to make everyone happy? I don't see how. And Fred says, I want to avoid the bread. Yeah, you want to avoid the bread, and I don't mind eating the bread. Jane says, right. And Fred says, we can take the hot dog out for you, and I'll eat the bread. So the idea here is quite simple, actually, right? Fred can eat the bread, one whole bun, and Jane can eat the hot dog, one whole hot dog. So they both end up getting half of the food or half of the calories for all, approximately, right? But rather than cutting the whole sandwich in half and half of the hot dog, half of the bread you get, half of the hot dog, half of the, ha of the bread I get, instead we change the parameters and say, look, let's just separate it in a different way. It's still cut in half, but it's cut in half differently. Is that okay for Jane? Yeah, that's great because Jane's goal was not not to eat the hot dog, but not to eat the bread. Now, how do we know that? Because she told us. She told us. Rather than just telling us what she wants to tell us, which is she wants to get more, she wants to lose less. That's the distributive approach. She begins at the beginning by telling us why? What's the reason? What's the purpose? Helping us understand her situation. And in that way, we can give her what she wants. Okay, that's a very simple little example. Now let's go on to a business example, which I think actually you can relate to. So here we have a job interview. So you go to a job, you want to get a job, and in this uh, interview, you can negotiate things. Maybe this is like a second or third interview for the job. And in this case, the applicant is going to bargain for his salary. Alex says, what is your target starting salary? And Fred says, 
I was thinking $50,000. And Alex says, that's too high for us. Our starting salary for this position is $40,000. So here we have, again, classic situation, right? Two groups, two parties, they have something common and they have something different. I want you to work for my company. You want to work for my company. We like to hire you. You like to work here, but I want to pay you 40 and you want to get 50. So that's a difference. So now we can negotiate. Fred says, I can't take your offer if the salary is that low. I have many alternatives. And Alex responds, I understand you may see this offer as low. But let me explain our position. Our firm has very clear guidelines for starting salaries. We are inflexible on this point. Now I like this uh, approach here because what this is telling us is at the beginning of the negotiation, very early, we begin to explain things. So yes, my offer is 40 and your demand is 50. Well, that's a big gap, right? But let me tell you why it's 40. And if you can understand why it's 40, then maybe we can change the situation somehow so that we can both be happy. Fred says, I appreciate your position, but I think I'm worth more. There are other companies offering compensation well over 40, so this is good too. Fred is explaining what's his situation. He can go to another company. How do I know that? He's telling me. Why would he go to another company? He's telling me why. They offer more money. Do they have a better job that he likes? No. Do they have a better a boss or manager that he likes or admires? No, that's not why. He's telling me clearly. He can go to another competitor because he'll get more than 40. Okay, that makes it clear for me to understand. Alex says, Perhaps we can find a mutually beneficial solution. A key, key word there, mutually beneficial. That is beneficial for both of us, win-win. That's the same as the integrative idea. Can you explain how you came up with your number 50,000? Okay, now, good. How did you get 50? I know our problem is we differ on 50. I want 40, you want 50. How did you come up with this number 50? And Fred explains, the industry average for this position is 42,000. And to be honest, I also have extra college courses. That makes me more valuable. Okay, I'm beginning to understand. So the average is 42, all the companies together, 42 is the average. You also took some college courses, so you think you know something. And Alex says, what kind of courses are we talking about? So please explain more so I can understand. In fact, I am just slightly less than six months away from completing a master's degree in management. I think that gives me a value added feature. Okay, so Fred is explaining here why his value is more than 40. And you know, he just tells me he's valuable. That's hard to understand. Lots of people do that. Lots of people just say, hey, I'm worth more, pay me more. And then why? Because I'm better. Why? Because I'm smarter. Well, what do you mean? You see, by explaining it in more detail, we begin to understand the situation. And if I can understand the situation, maybe I can figure it out and give you something that you want. Although I told you I can't change that price. That price is fixed by my company. But if you explain to me, maybe there is something I can do. And that's exactly what we find out. Alex says, would you mind telling me, are you taking these cl classes at Lakeview University? That must be the university nearby the company. And Fred says, yes. And you know, the cost there is very high. So school is expensive. And Alex says, our company offers a college payment program. If you take classes related to your job, half of the cost is paid by our company. So this is great. This is a tuition payment opportunity. And the company will pay half. And Fred says, 
it seems we have something in common. It does sweeten the package for me. So sweeten the package, that's a great little uh, phrase, right? So something in common, great. What we're doing here is we're trying to find something in common. We're working to find something in common, working very hard to find something in common. We're saying, hey, explain to me, why do you think you have more value? Well, because I'm going to have my master degree soon in business, an MBA, that's great, okay. So, tell me more. I'll, I go to Lakeview College, okay, that's nearby, tell me more. I think it's expensive, hey, great. Our company helps to pay for that. So we begin right away by finding out something in common. That commonality helps us to create a platform to work together towards win-win. Alex says, we also have a special agreement with Lakeview University that our employees receive a 20% discount on all classes in the business school. So not only do, does the company help pay for your education, not only do they take a large percentage, half, and pay, also your overall tuition is lower, so that means the half you pay is going to be smaller. This is sounding like a better and better deal all the time. And Fred says that that does add up to some money saved. But I still think my degree is worth more. So he's saying, yes, I'll get some money for college, I'll save some money on tuition, but still I think that my degree makes me more valuable. And Alex responds by saying, after you graduate, there is an automatic pay increase of 10%. And Fred says, so that would put my pay at 46,200, 10%. And I would save tuition expense for my last semester. And Alex responds, exactly. When you consider all you get with our company, the difference with other firms is slight, small. We value continuing education for all our employees and try to accommodate them. And Fred says, this does change the situation, although I still think the starting salary is too low. And Alex explains, our company has very tight cost controls in order to increase competitiveness. Rather than emphasizing individual pay in dollars, we try to reward our employees through numerous programs such as education. And Fred says, I'm starting to think this offer is attractive after all. I'll need to consider the options. So I think this is a great little example. What we end up with is this idea that, well, I'm focused on my goal package. My goal package is that starting salary. I need it to be 50. But you know, maybe you did not have all the information. If I give you more information, I try to understand, then maybe your goal package can include other things that you did not think of before. So by keeping the negotiation going, by understanding more and more, we can come to a conclusion that is win-win for both sides. So let me explain to you our company will pay for education. Our company will help you get a lower education cost. Our company also has an opportunity to get a raise after you get your a degree finished after you finish your degree and on top of that our company really is focused on controlling costs that you should understand helps our company have a better future so that should motivate you to work for us we're not just giving money away left and right we're really looking at merit so I want you to understand our company and I want to understand you what you need and in this way by understanding more and more about each other they come to a better conclusion. How did they do that? They expanded the pie. They were not just focused on the pie. The pie was just the pay. 40,000, 50,000. That pie is hard to change. If that pie is stuck at 40, but you want 50, I can't change that pie size. What am I gonna do? Fixed, win-lose, right? Distributive. What can I do? I try to understand you. I try to explain me. Let's be honest and try to understand each other's position and then we can change that pie, expand that pie. I get what I want and you get what you want. 
Okay, so that's the fundamental idea of this integrative bargaining approach. Now we have vocabulary here as always, and I want you to take time to look at the vocabulary because it's important for uh, practicing, it's important to understand the ideas. So let me just go over very quickly with the vocab here, and you can follow along with me. Alternative. Alternative is what are the choices, what are the options. Appreciate. Appreciate here means I understand. I appreciate your position. I, I appreciate your situation. I understand. Attractive, meaning that something looks good. Hmm, this offer is very attractive. Automatic. Once you come on board, if you get your degree, there's an automatic raise. Automatic. It happens without any consideration. It's automatic. Competitiveness. Competitiveness. I understand your company's competitiveness is very high. That means, how do you compete? Do you compete well compared to other companies? Explain. Please explain your position. Can you please explain more why you have this price? Feature. What are the features of this package? What are the features of your offer? These are the parts of the offer. Mutually, meaning together. I think we have a mutual benefit. We can mutually benefit from this deal. Package. What is everything offered? Now it's important because the package is not just the price. The package is not just the product. The package could be many things. It could be including the service. It could be including future opportunity. By understanding the package, we may be able to find something that the other side is interested in. So if you quickly look at some of these words we're looking at here, these are all related to this idea of win-win. Trying to be positive, trying to be forward-looking, trying to work together. Perhaps. Perhaps is a, is a kind of positive and polite way to say maybe something's possible. Perhaps we can find a deal. Perhaps I can take a lower salary. Perhaps we can accept a higher price. Maybe. Satisfactory. Satisfactory. Satisfactory meaning I accept it, it meets my requirements. It meets my requirements. It doesn't mean I love it, it doesn't mean it's great, it means it's okay, it's good enough. Slight, slight, meaning there's something small. There's a slight disagreement. I disagree slightly with this price. This price is slightly too high. So this slight small. You can see all of our words are being very positive, not super negative, not confrontational, not win-lose, but rather trying to work towards win-win. Slightly. Sweeten. Sweeten means to add something to the package, to do something, to add a little bit of value for the other side. Let me sweeten the deal. Can I sweeten the deal by helping you understand what your opportunities are with our company? Remember, you can come to our company, work here, and you're going to get half of your education cost covered. Maybe you don't go to school now, but in the future, you may consider going to school. Certainly that can sweeten the deal, sweeten the package, make it better. Tight meaning you cannot really make any change. You don't have flexibility. So our costs are tightly controlled. Our situation is very tight. Understand. I want to understand your situation, right? Can you please understand my situation? Or help me understand your situation. Valuable, high value, something that is important to you. Please tell me what's valuable to you. Please tell me the most valuable part of this position to you. Value, again, something that has a value. What's the importance? Why is this valuable to you? Okay, let's follow up a little bit on this. So, integrated negotiation, both sides try to find out what the other side really needs. This is really the key point. They want to understand each other. Now, again, it sounds great in theory, very difficult to execute. Why? 
because if both sides are not both working towards win-win, then one side is going to win. That's the side who's secretly trying to win-lose. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to tell you a lot of information. I'm going to tell you all of those things that usually I'd be trying to keep secret. I want you to understand me, I want you to understand me, I want to understand you, you want me to understand. When it's mutual, we have a much better chance to have a maximal outcome. Rather than fighting over every point, rather than taking a strong stand, you know, and giving a dollar discount, giving a 50 cent discount, giving 10, rather than doing this kind of idea, it's possible that we find out what both sides want is different. And we can give different things to both sides. Integrative negotiation generally moves through four stages. Stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Let's take a look at these stages a little bit. Stage one is to find the common problem. So we need to understand what is it that's different between us. Stage two is understand more. Let me understand, what do you want? Why do you want it, right? You don't, you don't want the hot dog. Why don't you want the hot dog? Oh, you're on a diet. What kind of diet? Oh, you're not allowed to eat bread. How about half the bread? Oh, no bread. Okay, now I understand. Understand the needs. Stage three, brainstorming to think up solutions. Think up solutions. Come up with ways to make both sides happy. And then stage four, pick the solution that is best for both sides. That's not compromise, that doesn't mean half and half. It means pick the solution from your list of solutions, possibilities, to help both sides get what they want. Key to this is you need to really work towards this idea of mutual benefit and also you need to avoid being personal. I think in the example we just saw was a was interesting when we look at the job interview. We didn't get personal. We didn't say, you know, I don't like your attitude or you're being too forceful or you're asking for too much. We often do that in distributive bargaining. So we're trying to make the other side look bad. We're trying to make the other side say, you don't compromise. Uh, uh, you don't give in enough. You're not working together. We say that because we want to push the other side to give in more. In this case, we try not to say those things. We don't accuse the other side of something. We don't say you're not giving in. We don't say that they're trying to uh, push on something too hard. Rather, we just stay open and we say, explain more. Why do you want that? What's up with that? What's the deal on that? Can I understand you more? Let me understand. And by understanding more, I can maybe find something there. Like, hey, you eat the hot dog, I'll eat the bread. Or, hey, take the lower salary now but then you're going to get lower tuition costs after you come to work for us. That's pretty cool. A number of tactics are helpful in moving through these four stages. We're going to look at tactics a little bit more in the next uh, unit of this. But uh, just to mention a few things here to help us keep going. In the first stage, both sides share their information by stating what the problem is. A buyer may complain about the products they received were defective as a quality problem. The seller may complain about the product quality was acceptable. So here we seem to have a problem that's you know insurmountable. One side thinks the quality is bad, the other side thinks the quality is okay. How can we overcome that? Well, the way to do that is don't argue over who is wrong and who is right. In other words, don't focus on that disagreement area. We disagree about this quality. Okay, well, I think the quality is good, you think the quality is bad. What can we do? Let's not talk about that so much. Let's try to talk about some other things. What are some of the other things we can talk about? Well, we can do things like try to define the problem more clearly. That is, explain to me, what is it about the quality that was the problem? When you sold it to your customers, what happened? What is it the customers found? What is it they felt? What did they report to you? What, was the com what were the complaints they had? Explain to me more. Show the facts. Okay, let me just list the facts. 
Product A had this problem. Product B had this problem. Let me just show you the facts. In this way, it's not personal. Don't come to a solution too fast. Don't instantly say, you must give me something. You must replace this defective product. You must return my money. Rather, at the beginning, we try to de-emphasize a solution too early, and we try to explain the situation more. Let me help you understand what happened, and let me listen to you to explain why you did what you did, and I can explain what I did, why I did what I did. Okay, after we get a little bit of understanding, understanding the situation, understanding the context, now we go to stage two, find interest and needs. What is it you need? So in this one, we need to explain what do I want, right? Now at the beginning, we were talking about things like our targets, our goal package, remember? And that's useful, but here we're trying to stay more open. So we're going to say, hmm, what is it I really want? So in my case of a defective product, I, I don't really care about the defective product. What I care about is my customers. I bought your product. My customer said it had a problem. What is it I want? I want my customers to be satisfied to not complain. So you need to begin to ask yourself, what do you want? And then explain that to the other side. You need to try to understand what does the other side want. So you ask yourself questions like, what do I want? How important is this to me? How important is this relationship to me? Something we've talked about previously. So both sides try to understand each other and by understanding each other they may get a better idea of what the problem is. And then we do a little bit of brainstorming. We try to come up with solutions. The key point here is to not criticize solutions, not to shoot down solutions, but to generate as many solutions as possible. Thinking outside of the box, expanding the pie, coming up with different ideas. Think up as many as possible. Be creative and think up anything. Don't criticize ideas as being bad. Just come up with a list. Generate, an I generate as many ideas as possible for what could possibly be a solution. Then in the end, you're going to stage four, you're going to choose one of those solutions. And then you choose the solution that's maximal for both sides. Okay, so I think, why did I cover integrative bargaining second and distributive bargaining first? And the reason is because I think it's very easy for us to believe or feel, hey, integrative bargaining is wonderful. Everyone gets together. Everyone is happy. It's win-win. We should always work to win-win. But I want you to keep in mind, that's easy to say, it's hard to do. The key part of having a successful integrative negotiation is that both sides are being integrative orientation or holding an integrative orientation. They both want to win-win. You don't know that that's always true for the other side. They'll tell you, oh, I'm being honest. Are they being honest? Are they telling you the truth? Is that really what they're thinking? It's not easy to know. Maybe impossible to know. Maybe you need to have a track record, a history. So we could say, well, if maybe this one time I believe you, and then if it's successful, then later Next time, two months later, six months later, a year later, we negotiate, I know I can trust you, you know you can trust me. So at some time I have to make that sacrifice. At the same time, you may believe you make that sacrifice, but then in this specific deal, that is not true and you end up losing. So you need to ask yourself at the beginning, as we said, how important was that relationship? How important was getting that deal? You may lose a deal we may get a bad deal because you thought you were working towards win-win, but you weren't. Uh, that you may consider that if your job depends on it and you need to maximize this deal, are you ready to take that chance that trusting the other side is going to really get you what both sides want? I'm not sure. That's something you need to judge. So there's no easy answer, but I do want to emphasize, be careful. 
Don't assume everything's win-win. Don't just go up to another group during our RPG and say, hey, I'm win-win, you're win-win, let's be win-win, let's be integrative. Yeah, okay, it's possible, but it's not likely. So be careful, think about it. Maybe establish some relationships and know who you can trust and who you can't trust. All right, well, that's a happy ending, right? We have integrated negotiation. Good luck with your integration. Win-win, expand the pie, think out the box. There's a bunch of phrases like this. Good luck with your negotiation. See you next time.